Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Proja and today we're going to be taking a look at how to choose the right video card. So a video card or graphics card should make up the bulk of the amount of money spent on the gaming exclusive rig. But just how much should you spend? Stick around to find out. So I split this video up into quite a lot of parts and the things you should consider are budget, resolution, refresh rate, manufacturer exclusive features, games, its purpose, system requirements, whether to buy new or second hand, and lastly whether you should go for AMD or Nvidia. Well that was a mouthful. Anyway, kick back and enjoy the show. Now in terms of budget, it's different for everyone. So some of you might have really low budget, others high, and some of you might have been set a budget from your parents so it's not really under your control. I'm just going to say the sweet spot for 1080p gamers is between 200 and 250 pounds. That does sort of go up to 250 if you're looking at the GTX 970 or the R9 390. That is if you're buying new and gaming on mostly 1080p. And then from sort of 250 to 300 pound price range, you can get into entry level 1440p gaming. Like for example, by today's standards, the GTX 750 Ti is pretty outdated and it's several years and generations old. But the reason I suggested it in quite a few of my tight budget builds is because people are on a tight budget and because it still supports a lot of Nvidia's features. Now if you do have the extra £30 or £50, I'd most likely go for the R9 270X or 370, maybe even get a GTX 950. But for some of you, that just won't be an option, so you need to figure out how much you have to spend on a video card. A good way of doing it is either decide on the parts and then use the remaining money to buy a GPU or to actually buy a GPU around the third of your budget. Good ones to note for the price bracket is the R9 390 for high-end 1080p and entry-level 1440p gaming or if you're into MOBAs, something like the GTX 950 or R7 370, a good picks too. I also want to mention that the GTX 960 is often overlooked and I don't really get why. In some places, the price of the newly released 950 is around the same price as 960, so just look out for that. On to resolution, basically the higher res you play, the more money you should invest in the GPU. If you run 720p, you won't need a very high-end GPU. 1080p is the majority, whereas if you run it at 1440p, I'd go for something a little more higher end. Lastly, if you do 4K, then you should be looking at 980 SLI to get a very smooth 60fps in most of today's demanding games. As for the refresh rate, it's basically how many times a second your monitor displays an image. For most people, it's 60Hz, whereas for some, including myself, it's 144Hz. You can also get 120Hz monitors. I'm just going to talk for the majority again, which would be 1080p 60Hz monitors, and for that you should look at something like a GTX 960 or a 970. For Team Green, and as for Team Red, you should look at something like a 280X, 290 or 390. Now on to manufacturer exclusive features. You want to look for one with a good cooler, and in general, a good reputable brand. This basically includes MSI, EVGA, Gigabyte, Asus, Palette, PNY, Sapphire, etc. This is because they have a better design for optimised airflow, their own special software features, which isn't too impressive normally, and warranty, which is a big one, inputs, a factory overclock, backplate, and your colour scheme if you're actually going to see the components through a side panel window or something like that. As we move on to the games category, things become a lot clearer. It's basically what games you're going to play and whereabouts you want the settings to be. MOBAs and some FPS games like Counter Strike and COD are really easy to run, like my older HD 6670 could run COD, and that's saying something. So if you're exclusively playing these types of genres, you should be looking at somewhere between 100 to 150, really stretching it at 200. But hold your horse, some games like the one you see in my benchmarks at the end of my builds are a lot more difficult to run. These are your Battlefield Crisis and Witcher games. So yeah, if you're looking to play these games, then just consider that they're more difficult to run. Also, if you're the type of person who doesn't mind cranking the settings down a bit to high or medium, then you're in luck, because you can just go for a slightly less powerful GPU, move the settings down ever so slightly to get a solid frame rate and save a lot of money. Also, some games do favour AMD and some Nvidia. For the most part, I wouldn't really worry about exclusives and I'll get more into DX12 and DX11 performance later on. So in summary for games though, ask yourself what games you want to play and what graphical settings because that matters a lot. Next we've got purpose. This is basically a simple question of what are you going to be using it for? And you might be looking at me going, to play games, duh. But this is basically, other than gaming, will you be using it to record, Bitcoin mine, or using it as a fully-fledged workstation PC? Workstation PCs tend to run 980s, Titans, or 980Ti's, but don't let that discourage you, because for the most part, people like that do a ton of encoding, rendering, etc. As for Bitcoin miners, AMD wins hands down. If you're into that sort of stuff, look at cards like the 290, 290X, and 390. And as for recording, I really would look at NVIDIA. If you decide you want to go with AMD, look at other recording software such as Fraps, DxTory, or Action, but I wouldn't suggest going with AMD Gaming Evolved, it doesn't work too great, but hey, if you've got an AMD card, then why not try it out? Now the reason I say NVIDIA for recording is because of the Shadowplay feature. It's basically an advanced recording program for your desktop and games, not to mention it's free and has a shadow mode to record the last few minutes and doesn't impact performance, unlike Fraps or DxTory. For most gamers, this whole category won't matter too much. 
just to know that the video you're watching on screen now was recorded through Shadowplay. And now we've got the question of new versus second hand. Or really just want to get a new card entirely, then go for that. But if you're smart and you look carefully, you can get some pretty sweet deals on hardware. If you're buying second hand, make sure that you've got some sort of protection like a warranty or eBay buyer protection so that you don't get scammed and have enough time to see if the product performs as expected and there aren't any hiccups. So that when you actually buy the product and you get it, you can test the temperature under load as well as core clocks and everything else. Also make sure that it's from a reputable seller and that there's a big enough price difference between new and used to make buying a product secondhand actually worth it. Oh yeah, and make sure the card's in good condition obviously. I'll give you an example. On eBay I managed to find an R9-280X for around £100, so that's a sweet deal compared to what you'd get if you were buying new, which is something like a 750Ti. The 280X even beats a 960. That sort of performance. Now onto system requirements. When you're buying a graphics card, make sure that the motherboard has PCIe 3.0 preferably. Though it is backwards compatible, so this won't matter too much. The CPU should be good enough not to bottleneck, and RAM is preferably DDR3 onwards. There's no point in getting a GTX 970 or R9 390 if you're still using an old CPU and DDR2 RAM. This is because it means that the motherboard and CPU are extremely outdated. Another thing you should consider is whether you can handle the TDP or power consumption. Make sure that you check the card in benchmarks online to see how much it requires on load. And then we have the PS2 connections. Make sure that your power supply can accommodate for some of the connections that your graphics card need. For example, most older PSUs won't have more than one 8-pin, whereas a 980Ti requires two 8-pin connectors, so just look out for that. And now we come on to AMD vs NVIDIA. I just want to point out that I've owned cards from both sides and don't have any buyers. I also want to point out that fanboyism is stupid since if everyone roots for either AMD or NVIDIA, then they'll have a complete monopoly, meaning that they can do whatever they want. Having competition is great for us consumers since it lowers price and forces the companies to innovate. So I'll start with NVIDIA. Whilst both have pretty much the same features, some are better on NVIDIA, vice versa. NVIDIA offers CUDA which is more widely accepted than OpenGL, especially in Adobe products. They also seem to have better multi-GPU support and a good recording software known as Shadowplay. Although I don't know the idea of exclusives, especially NVIDIA exclusives, you do have Gameworks, and as well as that, NVIDIA GPUs tend to run cooler for the most part, and many even have a lower TDP to performance ratio. Alternatively, AMD GPUs have somewhat better performance for the similar price if you're looking for the under £300 category, and a lot of features that NVIDIA does offer is counted some way by AMD too. Now drivers are a bit of an awkward thing, many prefer NVIDIA drivers, though I don't really see a difference. I mean they both offer downscaling, multi-monitors, free sync or G-Sync and a ton of other things. As we got onto DX11 and DX12 things become a bit different. So in DX11, NVIDIA was kinda dominating in terms of performance, and with DX12 it seems AMD have pulled this one out of the bag. If you didn't know, DirectX is just an interface that set instructions to the video card. With that out of the way, it will take some years for AAA titles to adopt onto DX12. Okay, so here's the thing, if you want to get a higher end card, NVIDIA at DX11 will probably be your best bet. Even though cards like the 280X, 390, etc. dominate at that price point. But I'm talking about the over £300 category, like the 390X, Fury, Fury X or Nano. They just aren't really worth it, IMO. But if we look at DX12, we can see that AMD cards will benefit mostly from this. It basically means AMD cards will get a massive bump in performance, and whilst I don't want to go on about Ashes of the Singularity, since it is an AMD game, it's not really reliable enough for measurement. We need to wait and see just how much better performs than AMD cards, or NVIDIA, even though AMD is probably the one. Now this is to do with NVIDIA's 900 series and under not having asynchronous shaders or asynchronous compute. Even though whilst it seems hardware based, NVIDIA said they'll fix it in a patch, but I don't know how far that'll go. But AMD has basically made it Mantle 2.0, and we will have to wait and see not only the difference that it makes on published games, but also whether NVIDIA can combat it. Now for the most part, DX11 performance on NVIDIA cards will stay about the same for DX12, whereas AMD cards will see a massive difference. That is as of today, so it might change in the future. For the whole DX12 thing, by the time they release a fully fledged AAA titles on DX12, we might as well be looking to upgrade again. For me, I knew about the DX12 fiasco but still decided to go with Nvidia for performance at the top tier card, CUDA and Shadow Player as well as other features. Hopefully Nvidia gets it sorted for all of us, but I also want to make sure that AMD are competitive to prevent a monopoly I talked about earlier. So that is it guys, thanks for watching, if you liked this video and found it helpful, drop a like, and if you didn't, and you guys thought it sucked, you guys know what to do. If you have any suggestions for future videos, share them down in the comments below. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, and this has been Proto. Adios!